Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Nyampty, lovethatface.com, and if you follow our YouTube channel, you know that my favorite procedure is facelift surgery, and uh, we have many videos on that, and we have almost 20 million views on our videos, so thank you so much. One thing I try and do is when a viewer uh, emails me with a question, I'll try and answer that, and we're going to answer a question today. And the viewer is, hey, Dr. Joe, when is it time to have a facelift? Now, that's a great question because it is a, um, uh, a thing that people wonder all the time. You know, do I do it, am I doing it too young? Is this a good time? And when is it too old? So let's talk about this. First of all, uh, Dr. Joe and I am to third, lovethatface.com, cosmetic facial surgery in Richmond, Virginia. All I do is head and neck surgery, so I only do cosmetic surgery from here to here. I don't do boobs, bellies, and butts. We do two or three facelifts a week, which is uh, almost 100 a year, and I've done over uh, 1,200 facelifts at the recording of this video. And we have an international practice. I'm so uh, proud and honored to see people from uh, the, the city, the state, the United States, and uh, international patients as well. So we're all set up to do that. All right, let's answer this question. When is it time for a facelift? Well, we click along pretty good for a half century. So in other words, up to 50 years old, you know, you look in the mirror, we look pretty good. And then right around that time, you know, 47 to 53, you look in the mirror one day and you start to look like your parents, right? And I'm a great example, okay? I have these jowls and I have this neck skin. And believe me, if I had hair where I could hide scars, I would look like this and not this. There's nobody alive that's 50 that hasn't gone in the mirror and done this. So the question is, when do you have a facelift? There's a lot of thought processes here, and I'm going to give you a real basic answer first, and that is when you think you need one, okay? Now, some people come in here, and we, we've had 20-year-olds come in and want a facelift. Clearly, that's out of the ballpark. Really good cosmetic surgeons and really ethical cosmetic surgeons know when to say no. So there are some people that come in here, and they're, they're great people. They're very nice. They're well-balanced. It's just too early, and I don't think that they would get the benefit. Uh, they just don't have enough aging, and I'll say, look, it'd be my honor to do it. Come and see me in two or three years. Now, on that younger end of the spectrum, okay, um, 30, 40 years ago, people waited until they were older to have cosmetic surgery or facelifts. They would wait until their 70s, and they would go off somewhere and have a big procedure. And back then, people didn't put things back. They didn't do fat injection or cheek implants and things like this. And, and they just pulled the skin back on a skeletonized face and it looked very unnatural. And the change was so big that that even looked unnatural. So younger patients and today's contemporary patients want to have smaller procedures at a younger age. And they want to avoid that overhaul that their parents had. So you know, our average age for a facelift is probably around uh, 52 or 53. Now, that may include 47-year-olds, and it may include 85-year-olds. Uh, so there's a big spectrum there. Now, when a patient comes here, and again, a facelift is effective from here to here, and it doesn't do anything here. So people want their jowls improved and their neck skin improved. That's basically what a facelift does. So if somebody comes here and they have very, very minor aging, I can do a facelift, uh, but the result's going to be very minor. And, you know, it just may not be worth it uh, for them. They may want to wait. By the same token, we do the mini lifts or sometimes a weekend facelift. And, you know, those are a pretty small percentage of the facelifts that I do because although those sound great and they're very frequently used as a marketing tool, they don't do that much. So they're fine for people that don't need that much. So... It's not uncommon that if somebody's in their 40s and they have early jowling or early neck skin and they know where that's going because their mom or dad or whatever, uh, you know, just they have poor, uh, poor genetics and they want to do something early. So that's what those small lifts are for. And so you have your weekend lift, which is your smallest lift, and that's really for a little bit of jowl and very minor neck skin. The Mini lift is really just a small facelift. And in all honestly, honesty, uh, a facelift is a facelift. You just do a little bit more work on people with more skin. In other words, the incisions are the same. The dissection is the same. It's just people with more aging 
need a, a bigger procedure. And the facelift procedure is really about a century old. If you look in textbooks that are almost 100 years old, the, the procedure is pretty much uh, the same. Now, obviously, with uh, modern biomaterials and surgical techniques and anesthesia, it's much easier, much safer, and much different. But I think if you keep in your mind that facelifts come in small, medium, and large, all right? So I'm supposed to be answering this question, how do you know when you need a facelift? So when you look in the mirror and you have jowls and extra neck skin and it's really starting to bother you, then you probably need a facelift, all right? And what type of lift you need uh, is really dependent on how much laxity in, in the quality of your skin, how much fat, how much loose skin. So keep in mind, facelifts come small, medium, and large. Now, um, my happiest patients are patients that are well-adjusted and they come in here. They don't want to try and look like somebody else. They, they don't want to have a, uh, a facelift because they think that, you know, the opposite sex is going to chase them around or they're going to get all these job promotions, they want to look as good as they feel, and that's important. So what determines if you're a candidate for a facelift? Well, obviously, if you think you are, um, but health, recovery, and budget, those are big factors. You got to be in good enough health to have surgery and anesthesia. Um, you have to be able to take enough time off of work, which is usually around two weeks, and you have to be able to afford the procedures that you want. Now, again, this spectrum you know, some people say, well, is it too late to have a facelift? Well, we've done numerous facelifts on patients well into their 80s. And some of these patients uh, were actually in better health and better condition than some of the patients I see in their 50s who are smokers or, you know, just weather beaten. So it, it's your, your health that is kind of the first main determinant. And uh, the recovery, you know, you may only do one face in, facelift in your life. But people are living long enough now where it's not uncommon. They may have two facelifts. And we're all in a rush. You know, we all, we work, we, we have busy schedules. But you got to look at this like you might only do it once in your life. And you have to carve out the time for a proper recovery. Because if you try and rush your recovery, it's going to be bad for the patient. It can compromise the result. And it adds a lot of stress to the surgeon and staff. So you... You just really need to get your ducks in a row. So winding this up here, and by the way, I'm going to show you some facelift cases at the end of this. Um, the thing about today's patients is some of them will do facelifts at a younger age. Now, let me explain this. If you're 50 and you start to have a little excess skin and excess jowling, from the time you're 50 till the time you're 55 or 60, that really starts to increase, and it, it may double. So a lot of people will do what I call a preventive lift. They'll do a smaller lift at a younger age to avoid those upcoming five, six, seven, or eight years where that's going to get worse and worse and worse. So they don't want to look older before they look younger. And they'll do these smaller lifts at a younger age. So obviously, there's so many variables that go into this. And I've just tried to explain some of the basis for the thought process. So you got to be in good health. You've got to take time off. You've got to have your, uh, your budget straight because we frequently do uh, other procedures, eyelid surgery, brow lift, facial implants, laser at the same time of his facelift. And when you look for a surgeon, number one, you want somebody with experience. They ought to be able to show you hundreds of cases that they have done. You want somebody, there's two things that I have to do personally to, to be successful. I have to have a safe surgical environment uh, that's, and that includes anesthesia and sterility and modern uh, equipment and emergency equipment. Uh, so patient safety is always number one. And number two is predictable outcomes, all right? Usually if you're pretty successful in this, uh, you're, uh, you have natural outcomes because patients that make, or uh, surgeons that make patients look funny are, are not going to be too popular. So look for somebody with experience, look for somebody that has a safe situation, look for a doctor that you feel comfortable with, that you can sit down and talk to, and not somebody that's, you know, that won't give you the time of day. And hopefully there's not many people out there, but I have patients come here for a second opinion, and, and they, um, they just don't feel uh, right about their doctor. You have to feel right about your doctor. Your doctor has to be available. I give everybody my cell phone and my email, as do my staff. 
And, and one of my mantras is, if you can't call your doctor, you chose the wrong doctor. So we're not arrogant, unapproachable people here. This is my passion. I love what I do. I, I get excited on Sunday night to come to work to do facelift surgery. So one of the things uh, that drives cosmetic surgery in this day and age, especially uh, with uh, younger people, middle-aged people, is uh, selfies and FaceTime. So nothing looks worse than when you're looking down FaceTiming somebody and getting that view that, that shows all the extra skin and jowl and everything. And uh, so when you're doing selfies or you're doing FaceTime, a lot of people become aware of their aging and uh, that drives them to come in and talk about facelifts. So when you know people come in and they say, is it time for a facelift? One of the things that I uh, talk about, I call the uh, mirror factor. And I ask the patient, look, when you look in the mirror and you see this stuff, uh, how bad does it bother you on a scale of one to 10? If they say it bothers them a three, then I tell them to come back in a couple years when it bothers them more. If they say, doc, I look in the mirror and this is all I see and it bothers me uh, eight out of 10, well, then that may well be time for a facelift. So I hope this has been informative. I know I've kind of rambled on here. Stick around. I'm going to show you uh, some of our recent facelift cases. And uh, thank you for much, so much for your time. I'm Dr. Joe Niamh, too. LoveThatFace.com.